what's going on guys and welcome back to another Falcon Notes. I'm Sakali and today we're going to be going over Unit 6 of Human Geography, Cities and Urban Land Use. I'm sorry guys, this is going out a little late uh, and I'm taking the AP test in two days so hopefully this goes up soon. But anyway, we're going to be talking about those Cities and Urban Land Use and vocabulary that goes with it. So yeah, let's get right into it. We first wanted to understand the form, function, and size or urban settlements over time. Of urban settlements over time, sorry. So, we, we go into pre-industrial, which is uh, pre-industrial is found in societies without sophisticated machine technology where human and animal labor form the basis of economic production. So there really is no cities until after the industrial revolution. Industrial uh, predominant, in, predominant in the modernized nations of Western Europe, America, and Japan, um, and to a lesser extent where their cultures have globalized, where produ pr productivity through machines and, er and energy sources from fossil fuels and atomic power phenomenally been economic activity. Productivity, sorry. Now, a manufacturing city grew out of the Industrial Revolution and the Little Ice Age associated with mushroom population, Factories, te uh, tenement buildings, railroads, and poor living, and health conditions. Uh, a modern city is modern architecture. Little attention is spent on building aesthetics or ornate designs. It has improved transportation and road systems and has a greater complexity. So like multiple central business districts or, and a dispersal into the suburbs. It's a hallmark of American life. Now, postmodernism is architecture and design, develop form, look, and commerce. Now, we go into the lots to know section. We, we need to learn so many things because in this unit there are so many models that we have to look into to understand everything about urban and city, city and urban land use. So we talked about urban components, which is the CBD, the central city, the ghetto, the node, and the suburbs. Now, the CBD is a location of skyscrapers and companies. Uh, it would be the center of three of the urban models that we're going to talk to about, but the CBD is where all of the businesses are located and things like that. Now, the central city is urban area that is not suburban, and it's generally the older or original city surrounded by the newer suburbs. The ghetto is inner cities that become dilapida dilapidated centers of poverty as Affluent whites move out of the suburbs, and immigrants and poorer people vie for scarce jobs and resources. A suburb is a residential community located outside of city centers, usually homogenous in terms of population and ethnicity. Now we go into our first theory, made, uh, so the central place theory, made by Walter Christaller, and he seeks to explain the number, size, and location of human settlements in an urban system. Settlements simply function as central places providing services to surrounding areas organized by hexagons to eliminate unserved or overlapping market areas. Central goods and services provide provided only at the central place or city. A uh, range of scale is maximum distance people will travel for a good or service reach. So the way my teacher taught us this is gas stations are relatively close by because nobody's going to want to travel a far distances to get them because they're used pretty frequently. But if we go to, say, a sports store like once or twice every year, then the range of sale would be a lot further because you only go there every so often. Whereas a gas station you go maybe once a week. <laughs> Threshold uh, relates completely to range where it is the minimum of customers needed to keep a business running. A complementary region is the market area, an exclusive hinterland with a monopoly on a certain good or service. Hinter hinterland literally means country behind, refers to the surrounding area served by an urban center or the heartland. Now we go into urban models. The first one, concentric circle model, concentric, concentric zone model, made by Ernest Bur Burgess in the 1920s. And it's based on his studies of Chicago, where it has one CBD in the middle, uh, the zone of transition, blue-collar workers, middle-class workers, and an outer suburban ring. So this model looks like circle, 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 circle. It looks like 
Von Thunen's uh, second centric circle model. Now, the sector model was made by Homer Hoyt in the 1930s. Uh, urban growth creates a pie-shaped urban structure due in, a, in part to the advancement of transportation like the electric trolley, um, and the same is true with high-rent transportation and industry. Multiple nuclei is made by Chauncey Harris and Edward Ullman. It's claimed that the CUD was losing its dominant position as the nucleus of the urban area. Separate nuclei became specialized and differentiated, not located in relation to any distance attribute. Now, urban realms are parts of giant conurbations, self-sufficient suburban sectors. An edge city is characterized by extensive office and retail space. Few residential areas and modern buildings signify a newer worldwide trend of the movement of the loci of economic activity. A primate city is a country's largest city, most impressive of the national culture and usually the capital city as well. Some examples of this are Paris, Paris, France, Lagos, Nigeria, Mexico City, Mexico, Dhaka, Bangladesh, Karachi, Pakistan, and things like that. Now the rank size rule states without that uh, that states that without a true primate city may follow this rule. Many more, uh, more developed countries lack primate cities because technology and wealth has diffused throughout their countries. The population of any given city should be inversely proportional to its rank within the urban hierarchy. Let's say if number one in the population was 12 million, the number two would be 6 million, and number three would be 4 million, and number number three would be 4 million, and number four would be 3 million. It just keeps going down. It There's not the same. Now, functional specialization. Uh, some cities are characterized by one specific activity, like Orlando, it's tourism, or Las Vegas, it's gambling. Cities tend to lose their functional specialization as they grow. Now we saw a couple of other uh, urban city models, like the Latin America city model, or Southeast Asian model, or Sub-Saharan African. Sub-Saharan African model actually had three CBDs because of, well, because they were colonized by the Europeans. So they had um, a market for the Europeans, they had a market for themselves, and a market for both. Latin American cities owe much of their structure to colonialism, industrialism, and massive population growth. The sector development radiates out from the CBD, where most industrial and financial activity occurs. Also contains barrios or ethnic neighborhoods. Alright, we move on to analyze the factors that lead to growth of various cities around the world. A megalopolis <laughs> occurs predominantly in mo more developed countries, and large coalescing super cities that were originally separate but have extend, expanded and joined together like San Francisco and San Diego or Boston and, wait Chicago and Pittsburgh wait yeah I think that's right yeah um, mega cities occur predominantly in lower developed countries and high population growth and migration cause these cities to attract massive amounts of population since World War II Squatter settlements or shanty towns are residential developed characterized by extreme poverty usually exist on land just outside cities that is neither owned nor rented. So a lot of the time many uh, people in poverty will make houses outside of places outside of cities and they don't actually own the land they're just kind of living there and a lot of the time they get kicked out because nobody owns that land. In urban hierarchy, it's a ranking of settlements occur uh, according to their size and economic function. Like a hamlet is the lowest level of settlement. Um, a village is clustered human settle uh, settlement larger than a hamlet and generally offering several services. A town is has a lot more goods and services. A city is clustered conglomeration of people and buildings together serving as a center of politics. Culture and economics, a town may have outskirts, but virtually all cities have suburbs. Now we finally move on to the 
to one of the final points, which happens to be contemporary urban issues and development. Sprawl is the process of expansive suburban development over large areas. The automobile provides the primary source of transportation. New urbanism is urban designing originating in the U.S. during the 1980s to work against sprawl. It's characterized by organized urban planning, suburban infill, or filling in huge unusual spaces, and are designed to be walkable, and uh, everything is everything that you need is right there. Gentrification is a process of converting an urban neighborhood from predominantly low income, run down to middle class, upper class. Okay, now we talk about socio-cultural influences, like racial steering, the practice in which real estate brokers guide prospective buyers uh, toward or away certain neighborhoods because of their race. Redlining is a legal discriminatory practice in the U.S. where my minorities are prevented from obtaining loans to buy homes or property in predominant white or affluent areas. And blockbusting is the process of white families selling their home because of fears that black would move in and lower the property value. Now, a couple of concerns of urbanization. Sprawl, outlying areas more susceptible to landslides, floods, storms, earthquakes. Loss of soil, farmland is lost. Land use, natural landscapes become cultural, like less rainfall and more pollutants. Pollution, growing volume of contaminants, Mexico City, Delhi, Bangkok, are most smog-ridden riverfront cities create pollution as well. Now revitalization is city planners have redesigned their central cities to make them more amenable to people moving in, especially higher income residents. Commercialization is transforming of an area of a city into spaces of consumption. Areas attract to residents and tourists alike in terms of economic activity. Functional specialization. Some... Oh, wait. What? Finally, we have the metropolitan stat statistical area. In the U.S., a central city of at least 50,000 people and the country within and the county within which the city is located at adjacent that uh, adjacent counties that function together like Seattle metropolitan area metropolitan area Seattle and the greater King County area include Pierce and Snohomish counties annexation is legally adding land to a city in the United States density gradient is the change in density in urban areas from the city to the periphery well, there you have it, guys. That's going to be it for urban land use, uh, city and urban land use today. That was basically all you needed to know about Unit 6. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed and got something out of this, leave a like. And be sure to watch my next video, Unit 7 of Development. Thanks. See you guys next time.